Hotline Miami is a frenetic, violent rush. Each chapter requires brutal improvisation as you shoot, stab, slash, gouge, punch, and bludgeon your way through dozens of white jacket mobsters. While innumerable games involve murder, few revel in it the way Hotline Miami does. It's a surreal, hyper-fast slaughterhouse, pulsing with electro beats. How do you make a sequel to something that relies on surprise, style, and shock value? Hotline Miami 2 answers by going in completely new directions. Despite appearing very similar on the surface, the abundance of gore and stunning soundtrack are still present, the storytelling and structure are dramatically different. Hotline Miami 2 is a more complex and ambitious game, which is not always a good thing. For as much as the sequel adds, it also loses the more focused thrills of the debut. The original Hotline Miami is cleanly split into two parts, each with its own protagonist. The sequel has nine playable characters, and you constantly rotate through them. On one hand, using someone different almost every chapter ensures that the player will never get too comfortable. Part of what makes it easy to keep pushing forward is that you never know what to expect. At the same time, it feels like Hotline Miami 2 never finds a rhythm. Just when you start to appreciate how a character plays, you're forced to use someone else. The first game offers choice through a variety of masks that provide different benefits and restrictions. Hotline Miami 2 has similar choices, but they're not available as often. It sacrifices a lot of flexibility in the name of storytelling. Perhaps the decision would be easier to admire if the narrative had a stronger pull to it. The plot surrounds the events of the original game, taking place before and after. When the credits finally hit, you'll have a broader understanding of the various forces at work, but as you're going through the game, it seems like it's almost intentionally distancing itself. Things change so often, and so erratically, that it's hard to remain invested or even curious. And then there's another, bigger question to tackle. Is lore really what made Hotline Miami so special in the first place? By comparison, the original game feels absolutely sparse. You largely travel from one murder spree to the next, only to be stopped by a phone call or a brief story sequence. The sequel is filled with dialogue, to the point where you'll just sort of want to get on with it. The lean nature of the original gave it an eviscerating edge. Hotline Miami 2 is bloated and uneven because it doesn't know which ideas to cut and which to keep. The sort of add more philosophy carries over into the level design. Areas are much longer and wider than they were in the first game, leading to infuriating moments where you get shot by an enemy that you can't even see. The areas get so big that it feels like you're practically crawling through them. Yet the worst moments are when the game simply decides not to work. On two separate occasions, we got stuck on something at the end of a chapter and had to redo the entire thing, losing about 30 minutes of progress each time. We encountered other smaller issues as well, such as enemies endlessly running around in a circle or repeatedly getting stuck on doors. Despite all of this, Hotline Miami 2 is still a thoroughly enjoyable and even occasionally excellent game. When its ideas click, they hit with a force not even the first game can match. Several of these moments come from a group known as the Fans. During levels starring the group, players can choose different masks that correspond with specific characters. Mark wields twin submachine guns and is undoubtedly one of the most empowering characters in the game. Although you still can't charge foolishly forward, the submachine guns afford more brazen tactics. Alex and Ash are similarly chaotic and cathartic. Alex carries a chainsaw while Ash can use firearms. You control both simultaneously, using one button to swing the chainsaw and another to fire. It practically breaks the game by having access to both weapon types at once, but the level of carnage and freedom they create more than makes up for it. The few times you can actually play as Alex and Ash are when Hotline Miami 2 embraces its most primal tendencies, allowing players to act on instinct instead of having to creep from room to room. Evan Wright, a writer, is a far less violent character, but is nonetheless just as interesting. He only incapacitates enemies unless explicitly instructed by the player to do otherwise during executions. Wright also doesn't use guns, choosing to remove ammunition from dropped weapons and thereby preventing enemies from picking them back up. He requires a much slower pace, since there are fewer tools available. 
Because write isn't overused, it's a welcome approach. Unfortunately, other characters are aggravating, or even downright boring. Manny Pardo, a detective, has a faster aiming speed, but it's not tremendously noticeable. His chapters feel like Hotline Miami at its most vanilla. Even worse is the soldier, who chooses one gun at the start of a chapter that he must use for the duration, which doesn't make sense because nearly every enemy you encounter carries a gun. He's also stuck with the same melee weapon every time. Whereas the limitations of the rider fit the character, the soldier is arbitrarily restricted. There are ammo boxes that restock the soldier, but resupplying gets tedious rather quickly. Instead of charging forward, you're only poking ahead and then running back to the box. At least, the music never disappoints. Every chapter is drenched in blaring synths and thunderous beats. Much like the first game, the music in Hotline Miami 2 isn't just background noise. It drives the action forward, accenting every killing blow. Expectations were high since the soundtrack is so essential in the first game, and somehow, the sequel matches it in virtually every way. Hotline Miami 2 is ultimately a lesser game than its predecessor, one that has just as many failings as it does strengths. Yet some of its ideas are so outstanding that it's absolutely worth playing if you can summon the appropriate amount of patience. It's an audacious game that takes risks and embraces experimentation. When so many franchises seem content on retreading the same ground, Hotline Miami 2 feels like an important, if often frustrating, asset.